Today we suppose to start with induction, you know. Induction, induction refers to how do we uh, produce electricity when we have a conductor, just a bare conductor or wire and permanent magnetic field. So um, we're supposed to learn today how to produce electricity. When we produce electricity, it's called induction, okay? Induce current, okay? And then we have to look at Lenz's law and Faraday's law, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to put this uh, for a while, wait for a while, this one. Let's start with this first, okay? This is right-hand rules. <clears throat> okay, what is right-hand rules, uh, guys? By using right-hand of the induced electric current produced. So if you remember the earlier, the last class on Monday, okay, we learned how a motor will rotate, the rotation of motor. And then we learn how the whole system is working due to interaction between the permanent magnetic field and the electromagnetic field. Okay, so today we're going to learn tabale. <clears throat> so what we learned the other day was when there is a current flow in a conductor, there will be electromagnetic field. First thing we learn. And when electromagnetic field is placed in between permanent magnetic field, when electromagnetic field is placed in between permanent magnetic field, the interaction between these two will produce a resultant force and the current carrying conductor is moved. So we learned last week, uh, no, Monday. So today we're going to turn the whole story. We're going to learn today that when we move any wire or conductor in between permanent magnetic field, we're going to produce current. And the current that we produce is called induced current. So how to produce induced current? That's our whole story today, okay? So see the notes here carefully. When a conductor is moved through a permanent magnet field, inside the conductor, an induced electric current is produced. So today we want to understand induced electric current. Induced electric current will be a current that flows in a conductor momentarily or temporarily as long as there's changes of magnetism. Electromagnetic induction is the production of an electric current, electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction is the production of an electric current by a changing magnetic uh, field. A changing magnetic field, huh? the conductor goes through changes of flux, okay. Let me read this and I explain a while. The induced current is produced when a conductor cuts across a magnetic flux. A change of magnetic flux linkage with a coil, okay? okay let's look at number four, two things. Conductor between permanent field of magnet and moving a magnet relative to a solenoid. Okay, <clears throat> see, um, first thing first. When you have Okay, a conductor, okay, when you have a conductor, let's say this is a permanent magnetic field. This is a permanent magnetic field. Okay, this is North Pole and this is the South Pole. This is a permanent magnetic field, North and South. You take a Okay, a copper rod, you take a copper rod, okay, you take a copper rod and this copper rod is not having any current flow. Huh? There's no current flow in the copper, it's just a copper rod, it's just a rod. It is just a rod, okay, it's just a rod, okay. This is a copper rod, okay. This is a copper rod. Okay, what are we doing here is that we are just moving the rod just down like that, moving it downward. We're just moving the rod downward, okay? And then if this rod is connected, connected, this whole, whole rod is connected to a wire 
and now it is connected to let's say a zero pointer galvanometer zero pointer galvanometer so listen to me carefully the blue color rod is the copper rod it, it is moved in between permanent magnetic field please recall bale when you have permanent magnet north and south there will be permanent magnetic field from north to south so you are moving a conductor if you do with plastic so no effect you are moving if you use kayu so no effect you are just taking a copper rod you can use a zinc rod you can use magnesium rod you can use um iron rod just a copper rod you just move it in between the permanent magnetic field see here carefully how to move you can move it down or you can move it up but the movement if you see carefully must be the movement direction must be perpendicular so you get the maximum effect to the direction of the magnetic field so you have copper rod you are moving it in between permanent magnetic field now remember let's say the moment you move it down the moment you push it down you move it down only your galvanometer pointer will start to deflect deflection of the galvanometer indicates there is a small current flows and let's say you move it up up okay so just now when you move it down the galvanometer pointer was deflecting to the right chonto ah example only and when you move it up the galvanometer pointer will push or deflect to the opposite direction so the whole idea shows that the whole idea shows that the moment we the moment we move a conductor the conductor was not having any current now guys it's just a wire see there's no battery nothing when you move a conductor in between as you move a conductor in between permanent magnetic field you should know that inside the conductor suddenly there's a flow of current this is called induced current induced current all right magnetic inductions who got question ask me now don't type ma because i'm i'm sharing screen so i can't what, see your message um what is galvanometer and what's the function galvanometer is like voltmeter it's it is to measure a uh, small voltage small current can and it is a zero pointer zero pointer means it's always will be at zero so it can deflect to the right or even to the left that means 0 1 2 3 ah 1 2 3 like that okay makas yeah yeah all right okay any question guys Did any you... other person yeah yeah i don't get the moving up and down thing you hold the see your magnet is there right okay see how this is your magnet right okay your magnet is here north pole south pole you just need to hold your conductor the rod this is the rod ah huh? hold the rod okay exactly perpendicular to the direction of the permanent magnetic field okay so you are able to move it up or down like cutting the magnetic field but you can't see anything you just move it in between only got it okay all right okay so what what are we learning here listen carefully uh, guys what are we learning here we are learning that when we move a conductor in between magnetic field lines see here again this is the permanent magnet north pole and south pole okay and we had the conductor just now this is the conductor this is the conductor and this is the permanent magnetic field okay this permanent magnetic field you can't see but you know there's a field of permanent magnetic field now there's a new name for it we call this flux the permanent magnetic field line we call it flux so this conductor this conductor which was not having any current earlier when the conductor is moved up or down all right up or down it is going to cut the flux see this is the flux this is the flux 
this is the flux and the conductor which is moved will be moving up and down then it will be cutting the flux up and down so as the conductor cut flux so i'm going to tell now the flux is somewhere here you can't see it's there the flux the green lines are the magnetic permanent magnetic field it's called flux it's called flux so now what happening in diagram 1 is that the conductor cut the flux when the conductor cut the flux we call these changes we call these changes of flux so the theory is very simple when there is a changes of flux the conductor will experience an induced current there will be a current and the current will flow in the conductor it's called induced electric current so that's called induced electric current okay i'm going to take away the whole diagram any questions apa ada soalan so moving a conductor in between permanent magnetic field will allow the conductor to produce electric current that electric current is called induced electric current any question guys boleh ah when there is changes of flux when there is a changes of flux the conductor produce induced current so then just now you say the zero galvan galvanometer ah galvanometer for the to the right the ah, one how yes yes so if you move the conductor let's say now you see my diagram here see this diagram ah see this diagram if you see this diagram now north pole south pole right so let's say the north pole south pole are horizontal so your conductor the blue rod here this conductor you are moving it up or down vertical so as you move it down maybe the galvanometer deflect to the right and if you move it up maybe it deflect to the left so the galvanometer will be deflecting according to direction of movement so what we are we are in indirectly i'm telling you now itself there is a current flows and the current has its own direction So the basic theory now, first thing you have to understand is that I repeat the whole story again, ah, uh, guys. Yeah, I repeat the whole story again. See, um, give me a second. The whole story is very simple. Whenever you move a conductor, okay, in between. a permanent magnetic field this is a permanent magnet okay this is a permanent magnet permanent magnet okay this is the permanent magnetic field and you take a conductor a copper rod a copper rod and it's connected to wire wire and a galvanometer a galvanometer will be zero pointer galvanometer all right This side also one two three. This side also one two three. Okay, so there will be permanent magnetic field. What is the name of the permanent magnetic field? We call it flux. The permanent magnetic field are called flux. Flux. So as we move our conductor, okay, the copper rod. as we move our conductor the copper rod okay up and down up and down in between the permanent magnetic field the copper rod undergoes changes of flux the moment the copper rod is moved down moved down or up all right the copper rod undergoes changes of flux so when the conductor cut the flux In diagram A, we call this conductor. Cut the flux. This is called. This is called flux. Teacher. Yeah. Um. So. We only call the magnetic field flux in this situation, right? It's not like every yes. magnetic field call flux, right? 
Actually, everything can be called flux. Just that induction, only you normally use it like this. All right. Thank you. Actually, another another name for magnetic field is flux. Okay. So, what you have to know now is that you have to know that this whole thing is called changes of flux. This is the changes of flux. So. What is changes of flux? The first changes of flux is conductor cut flux. What is it so important? What is the significance of it? Oh, when conductor cut flux inside conductor, there is a current flow. And this current flow is called induced current. What we call the current? Induced current. So can we produce current? Yes, we can. How to produce current without the help of a battery? We move a conductor in between flux region. We move a conductor in between flux region. Any question? And teacher, how 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 do we know the zero galvanometer deflect to the left or right? Ah, uh, the one I'll, I'll come back later. The one is right hand Fleming's rules. Earlier we learned left hand Fleming rules, right? Now we're going yeah. to learn right hand Fleming rules. Now we learn right hand Fleming rules. Blay? Okay, let's continue. Done with this part. Okay. Now we look at B. B, we want to understand now moving a magnet relative to a solenoid. So the diagram A, I told you changes of flux, but the changes of flux in diagram A was actually an idea where the conductor was moved in between permanent field of magnet. In diagram A, the conductor was moved in between permanent field of magnet. That is in diagram A. Okay. Now in diagram B, what we're going to do in diagram B, okay, we're going to actually move a magnet, move a magnet to a solenoid. Okay. What can we do? See here, we will actually take a permanent magnet. All right, we'll take a permanent magnet. Permanent magnet will have its own poles. All right, we'll have its own poles. Permanent magnet will have its own poles. Okay. Let's say it has its poles. This is the north and this is the south. Okay. You remember. Remember or not, we learned the other day, around a permanent magnet, there will be permanent magnetic field line from north to south. Around a permanent magnet, there will be permanent magnetic field line from north to south. Okay, now, now we have a coil of wire. Okay, this is a coil of wire. All right, again, it is connected to a galvanometer, zero pointer galvanometer. So if you notice this diagram carefully, you're going to move the magnet into the coil and take it away from the coil. As you do this, you see here carefully, all right? This is the upper portion of the coil, okay? This is the coil, the upper portion of the coil, okay? We're going to see the coil from here, from here. We see it from here, we see the coil from here. As the magnet goes into the coil, did you notice this is the permanent magnetic field? Permanent magnetic field. So when you move the magnet into the coil, all right, into and pull it up, did you notice or not the permanent magnetic field called flux? The flux will slowly cut the conductor, Mr. Flux. The flux will cut the conductor. So when you move a magnet relative to a solenoid, it's the idea where you will have a coil of wire. There is a coil of wire. This is the coil of the wire, coil of the wire, and this is the permanent magnet. You take a permanent magnet, and the magnet will have its own north pole and south pole. The magnet will have its own. North Pole and South Pole, permanent magnet. 
So this is the North Pole, Kataka, and this is the South Pole. And we know around it there is electromagnetic field. So this electromagnetic field will cut the conductor. Conductor won't come to two pieces all or whatever, but the idea of cutting means it experiences changes of flux. Again, there is a changes of flux. So if you look at it carefully, what is changes of flux? Two idea. First idea, conductor cut the flux. Second idea, the flux cut the conductor. So changes of flux will happen when you move a magnet and the conductor coil is not moving, not moving. Or you move a conductor, the permanent magnet is not moving. So you need two objects here, a conductor, a magnet. As you move the conductor in between permanent magnetic field, the conductor experiences induced current. Or like B here, as you move the magnet in and out of the, as you move the magnet in and out of the coil, in the coil you can see there's a flow of current. This current is called induced current. Your galvanometer pointer will be deflecting. This is called induced current. Your galvanometer pointer will be showing deflection. There will be a deflection. Any question? I repeat the whole story again. Huh? So I need someone to talk to me now. Let's call uh, Nigel. Nigel boy. Sean boy. Nigel. Are you there, Nigel? Nigel not there. Okay. Marcus, are you there? Yes. Okay, Marcus, let's talk. What do you understand? What is flux, Michael? Uh, Michael, Marcus. Oh, wait. Flux. Uh, what is flux? The magnetic field. Yes, very good. Okay, flux is the magnetic field. Very good. Okay, next. Next thing. Did you notice or not? Okay. That... Um, when you have flux, flux is the permanent magnetic field area. So when a conductor cut the flux area or when the permanent magnet flux cut conductor, two, two systems only, conductor cut flux or flux cut, cut conductor. When you look at both of these, what we call it? Huh? When a conductor cut flux, uh -huh. Or when a flux cut conductor, we call it as what? Changes of flux. Very good, very good, fantastic. Okay. Siapa ada soalan? Okay. Any question? I think I think you all can understand already. Boleh ke? Hello, hello. Boleh, boleh. Boleh, Thank very you. good. Okay, next. Wait, I'm sending you all the second link. So today no worksheet. Yesterday we did one, uh, Monday we did one worksheet, right? So I think tomorrow I'll send you one worksheet. Um, but, um, now break, right? So we have another slot, lah. can I? Hello? Okay. Okay. 11.45, okay. I'm sending to both group now. Ah. Siti Jam, ah. tunggu. Ah. Okay. This is for eleven forty-five. I'm sending to the groups. Huh? Mm, where's Pascal? Huh? Hey, Pascal, where are you? Ah, okay, found it already. Okay, now let's continue again. So we understand that there is changes of flux. Changes of flux occur when we have, right? 
a conductor moved in between a permanent magnetic field or when okay okay where am i with ah guys uh, okay all right so see here guys okay so what we are learning here we are learning that just now when we have a permanent magnet permanent magnet this now and we move a conductor we move a conductor okay in between the permanent magnet we move the conductor in between the permanent magnet as we move the conductor in between the permanent magnet this conductor undergoes changes of flux this conductor undergoes changes of flux and it started to produce induced current okay direction wait first the second thing we learned just now was we can also tabalikan the concept okay we can take a magnet a magnet all right which will have its own magnetic field all right magnetic field so every time there is a magnetic field even here also there's magnetic field not to sort this magnetic field okay these magnetic fields are called flux so now we take this magnet and we go and move it in between a coil of wire this is a coil of wire all right and this coil of wire also connected to a galvanometer so as the conductor is moved the permanent magnetic field line called the flux these are the flux the flux will cut this conductors pop 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 and move the flux will cut the conductors here on the left when we move the conductor up and down the conductor cut the flux so both of these are called changes of flux both of these are called changes of flux now we come back here again okay let's say now okay as early see here this is the permanent magnet again okay north and south okay this is the conductor okay this is the galvanometer now the question is you are going to move the conductor up and down perpendicular to the permanent magnetic field line correct so that changes of flux will occur okay good now the question okay induced current will be produced correct now the question is can anyone explain to me all right how to increase okay how to increase the amount of the induced current how to increase the amount of the induced current okay who can explain how to increase the amount of the induced current what can we do what can we do number 1 what can we do this is called changes of flux what can we do okay what can we do shawn said make the wire shorter correct can also tayang said increase the movement of conductor yes what else who has got idea so first thing here what we can do here is that if you want to increase the amount of induced current the speed we call it speed of movement the speed of movement we call it relative yes stronger magnet correct we call this as relative okay relative movement ah huh? so speed of movement called relative one okay. relative speed because you have two system here one you might move the conductor conductor right or number 2 you move the magnet so if you want to increase the amount of induced current you increase the relative speed movement okay 
Number two, what can we do? Who can suggest? What is the other system we can do here? Who can suggest? Number one, we move the speed. Stronger magnet. Yes, Sean. Stronger magnet. Very good. You use a stronger magnet. Okay, what happens when you use a stronger magnet, guys? The stronger the permanent magnet, the more the region of flux. The stronger the permanent magnet, the more the region of flux. Stronger magnet. Speed of movement. Number three is direction. Remember the other day's lesson? Direction of movement. You must make sure you move the conductor perpendicular to the regions of the flux. When it's moved perpendicular to the region of the flux, then only the value of induced current will be very strong. When you move it perpendicular, then the region of uh, upper induced current will be very strong. You see uh, here, see this diagram. This is a perfect perpendicular movement because you see, this is the direction of the permanent magnetic field, the green one, all right? And the conductor is here. It is moved exactly perpendicular direction. Perpendicular direction. So direction of movement, strength of permanent magnet and relative speed. So you increase the relative speed, the induced current value will increase. You use a stronger magnet, induced current value will increase and direction of movement. Make sure it's always perpendicular. It must be moved in a perpendicular direction, okay? Any question, guys? Any question? Okay, jika tak ada, see this now, now. Okay, now. If you remember your right hand Fleming's rules, we also will have, uh, sorry, left hand Fleming's rules. We also will have right hand Fleming's rules. Okay. How to look at right hand Fleming's rules? See, yeah? okay. As usual, this is your right hand now. The thumb. The thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and the rest of the two more fingers. Okay, so exactly like your left hand, this is right hand, the thumb pointing up, right? The middle finger, right? And this is the index finger, right? Okay, if you look at it here carefully, same earlier, this is the, all are perpendicular to each other. Wait, wait. this is the thumb. The thumb is pointing in the direction of movement. So then there's no more resultant force. Huh? When you use left hand, there's resultant force. This is right hand. <coughs> this is right hand, huh, guys. Okay. Right hand, the thumb is pointing in the direction of movement. Where do you move? Which direction are you moving? All right. And then the index finger is pointing in the direction of the permanent magnet. Again, this is pointing to south. This is north. Right, this is a right angle, and the middle finger, okay, is pointing in the direction of the induced current. This is the induced current direction. This is the induced current direction. The induced current will be produced in this direction. So, see, all are perpendicular to each other, all must be perpendicular to each other, right? So, this is the right hand of Fleming right hand rules. Why do we use this? We use this to understand the direction of the induced current. By using this, we will understand the direction of the induced current. Huh? Okay, how to understand the direction of the induced current? See here again. Okay, let's see now the earlier diagram. I draw a few times, right? Okay. This is the north pole of the permanent magnet. And this is the south pole of the permanent magnet. And this was our conductor. Okay. 
This is the conductor, the copper rod just now. Connected to a wire and a galvanometer. Okay. Now this is the permanent magnetic field, the flux region. This is the regions of the flux. Okay. We're going to move the conductor downward. 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 Huh? Now hold your right hand, right hand on the diagram. As you hold your right hand on the diagram, your index finger is pointing to south. Index finger. The second finger pointing to south. Your thumb is moving down. Thumb. Thumb. Huh? The thumb is moving down. Where did you notice? If you hold like that, if I call this A and B, if you notice carefully, if you put your hand carefully here, you will realize that the induced current started to flow from A to B. This is the direction of the induced current. You put your right hand here carefully, your second finger pointing to south, your thumb is pointing in the direction of T. Hello, Marcus, are you there? Yeah, 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 I'm here. Okay, okay. Sean, okay, I'm Sean. Okay, let's start. Hi. In this video, in another three minutes, I'll explain Fleming's uh, right hand rule. So we have a short animation here where we have magnetic field and a conductor placed in the magnetic field, the copper colored rod, and we are moving the rod upwards with the force and out comes a current from its edge. So let's start at the beginning. We have a magnet, a north pole at the far end, and we have a south pole at the near end, nearer to us. And you can see a blue arrow traveling from the north pole to the south pole. The blue arrow indicates the direction of the magnetic field lines. The blue arrow is your index finger pointing to south. See how they're holding the right hand. Huh? Right hand, huh? right hand is what? So so, huh? so, so, or yao, so? Yao Sao. Oh. Yao Sao. Uh, yao Sao. And um, the Fleming's right hand rule is shown in the image where you can see a right hand and the four fingers pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. And the conductor that's moved upwards in the magnetic field is indicated by the thumb. So there's a force acting on the conductor. So with these two inputs, the forefinger and the thumb, the output is the middle finger, which is pointing in the direction of the induced current. So Fleming's right hand rule is all about the three directions, which form the X, Y, and Z axis. Let's look at the animation again. Initially, the copper colored um, conductor is stationary. When it's stationary, although it's placed in a magnetic field, nothing happens. There is no force, so there is no induced current. Now we will apply a force and move the conductor vertically upwards inside that magnetic field. As soon as we start moving the conductor, you can see the green arrow coming out of the edge of that conductor. That shows that there has been an induced current created inside the conductor. You stop the motion and the current stops too. So this is the principle of Fleming's right hand rule. Once again, to recap, we have a conductor um, at the bottom level uh, between those two magnets and uh, there is no induced current and as soon as we create a force in the vertical axis on the conductor to cut those magnetic lines you get the induced current of the conductor so no force no current and for a generator we have to keep rotating the rotor and keep the conductors cutting the magnetic lines in order to get a continuous current i hope uh, this, uh, explains the fleming's right hand rule thanks and have a great day In previous video, we've seen that a changing magnetic produces an electric current. To move a bar to this is what the second one I said. First one, moving a conductor in between magnetic field. The second one is moving a magnet in between a conductor. You see, uh, a simple system they give. Uh, 
if you can move a permanent magnet as fast as possible in between the ring around the bulb, the ring is actually a copper ring, you know, they're showing a copper ring. As you move it as fast as you can, the copper ring is a conductor. It will undergo changes of flux. The copper ring will undergo changes of flux and the copper ring will start to produce induced current. And away from a coil, or being a magnet stationary and move the coil closer and farther away from the magnet. Turns out that moving the coil is a little bit more convenient. So in this video, we will see how to remember the direction of the electric current induced when we move a coil or when we move a wire in a magnetic field. So this comes a magnetic field due to two four pieces of a magnet. You can be these are two separate magnets or the poles of a horseshoe magnet. The reason we're choosing this is because if we had a single magnet, then the field lines would be pretty curved as we saw before. And it'll be very difficult to understand in what direction the current will be produced. But over here, if you use a range like this, and at least near the center, the field will be pretty straight. But if we go farther away, of course, the field will now start curving like this. But at least in the center, the field will be straight. It'll be easier to analyze what direction the current will be. And for, the, for to, to induce a current, we need a coil. But instead of a coil, we can just move a wire. So let's introduce a wire over here. And we can move this wire up and down like this. So as we move this wire, notice it starts cutting the magnetic field. And whenever it does that. So this one I said earlier, as you move a conductor up and down, the conductor is cutting the magnetic field. The magnetic field is called flux. So as the conductor moves up and down, the conductor is cutting the flux. So when the conductor cut the flux, changes of flux occur. The previous diagram in the same video, the magnet was moved into a ring. So in that diagram, it is still changes of flux, but the magnetic flux was cutting the conductor. So two options. This diagram, the one I make it still now, the conductor is moved in between permanent magnetic field. So conductor cutting flux. The previous one, the flux is moved. The magnet is moved. An electric current will be induced in this wire. Of course, uh, we need uh, a closed circuit for that. So we can imagine the wire from here gets connected to some galvanometer somewhere, which I've not shown over here. So let's say we move this wire up like this. We move the wire up. So we push it up. Then it turns out if you do the experiment, the current generated in this wire, the current induced in this wire is going to be out of the screen, all right? Somewhat like this. So the current will flow out so of- So all of you hold your right hand on the diagram. Hold your right hand on the diagram. Put your thumb pointing in the direction of the push. It's written push there, put your thumb there. Put your index finger, the second finger to the south pole. See the third finger, the middle finger coming towards you. That is the direction of the induced electric current. So this is how we use the right hand Fleming's rule. So the right hand Fleming's rule will help us to identify the direction of the induced current produced in every conductor when the conductor undergo changes of flux. So the direction of induced current produced in any conductor when the conductor undergoes changes of flux. The screen this way. And if you were to push it down, the current will reverse. The current direction will also depend upon the direction of the magnetic field. If you reverse the direction of the magnetic field, the whole current again will reverse. So now the big question is, how do we remember this? We will not worry about why the current is outwards. We'll just say that the experiment shows that it shows us it's that way. But how do you remember this? That's the big question we want to answer. So this can be remembered by using something called the right hand generator rule. So what we do is we take our right hand, 
and we stretch the three fingers, the thumb, the forefinger, and the middle finger, this way, such that they are perpendicular to each other, all of them. So this is perpendicular to this, this is perpendicular to this, if you see carefully, and even these two are perpendicular to each other. Stretch them that they're all perpendicular to each other. Then, the thumb represents the direction in which you are pushing the wire, so F for force. In what direction the wire is being pushed, the forefinger will tell us in what direction the magnetic field is, and the symbol for the letter for magnetic field is B, it's not M, I don't know why. Then the, th the middle finger gives us the direction of the current. And so if you were to use this right hand rule over here, you can see the force is up, the, ma the magnetic field, the forefinger is this way, and the middle finger is pointing out of the screen just as our current. And if you were to move this wire down, then this current direction would now reverse. Now, can you use your right hand generator rule one more time to convince yourself of this? Make sure that the field four fingers to the left, but this time make sure the thumb is pointing downwards and see what direction the middle finger points. Go ahead, try this. All right, if you have done it, it might look somewhat like this. The force is down, magnetic field is to the left. Now notice the current, that is your middle finger, is pointing inwards into the screen, just like what we got here. So just for practice, let's take another example. Here we have the magnetic field coming out of the screen this way, and the conductor is going to be moved, let's say, upwards. So we'll move the conductor up like this, cutting the magnetic field. Can you figure out in what direction the current will run in this conductor? Who can give me answer? So, so I'm holding my hand on the screen, my thumb is pointing up, my index finger pointing to the south. So I have only two options. The current flows to the right or to the left? Right. Um, to the right, very good. Again? Pause the video and see if you can try this yourself. All right, we have to bring in our right hand and if you align it according to the magnetic field and the push or the motion of the conductor, it would look somewhat like this. Out. The forefinger right. points in the direction of the magnetic field right. and the thumb must point in the direction of the motion of the conductor, in the direction which we are pushing the conductor. Then notice the middle finger points to the right that means the current in this conductor will Okay, done with that one. I just want to show you all a uh, generator now. Uh, AC generator. Last video, guys. Give me another few minutes. Huh? Okay, this one. You will learn about an AC generator. Last video, guys, AC generator. An AC generator is an electric generator that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy in the form of an alternating EMF or alternating current. Working principle of an AC generator An AC generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. In electromagnetic induction, when there is a relative motion between a coil and a magnetic field, an electric current or EMF is induced in the coil. Parts of an AC generator An AC generator has an armature A, B, C, D. It is a rectangular coil with many turns wound around a soft iron core. A shaft. It can be rotated rapidly. So one question. If this is a generator and this generator is fixed near a hydroelectric power station, the shaft which is rotating the coil should be what? You can answer. 
the coil is rotating right. So the shaft which is spinning and rotating the coil should be what? If it is actually a generator at a hydroelectric plant, what should it be? Who can answer? Anyone? Guys? Anchor. I know uh, anchor is the half. CDAB is anchor. The shaft is the, the big propeller, the big blade. Remember, as the water fall in hydroelectric dam, the propeller is spinning, yes or not? As the propeller is spinning, the big blade is spinning, the turbine is spinning. That's the one is the shaft here. The shaft is actually the turbine system. It will spin and will force the coil, ABCD coil, to spin in between the system. A field magnet, it may be a strong permanent magnet with concave poles. Two slip rings, S1 and S2. Okay, something here, listen. Huh? These are connected to the armature and thus rotate. Okay, see, huh? they showed here the magnet, permanent magnets are, are concave, you know, the shape is concave on the left and right. The right one also concave, the right one also concave. Remind me in the next lesson, ask me why. You must ask me in the next lesson why. Why it's not like a, slit, like a rectangular magnet, why it's concave. There's a reason for it. Two slip rings, S1 and S2. If you remember earlier, on Monday, we were looking at moto. We saw DC moto. So always remember DC moto and DC generator will have commutator. DC motor and DC generator will have commutator. It is called a split, split ring. But this is AC generator. AC generator and AC motor will have slip rings. Slip rings. These are connected to the armature and thus rotate with it. Two brushes B1 and B2. They provide electrical contact with the slip rings and a load, which may be a galvanometer as shown. Working of an AC generator. When the armature rotates between the poles of the field magnet, the magnetic flux linked with the armature changes continuously. As a result, an EMF is induced in the armature. This in turn produces an electric current through the armature and the galvanometer and through the slip rings. I want you to notice something. I just look at AB. Eh? When AB is moved, now this is it spins because we force it to spin. Eh? The coil of ABCD is rotating because we force it to rotate. Like the water falling, the turbine is rotating, so ABCD is rotating. Look at AB. Eh? If you look at AB alone, as AB is moved in between permanent magnetic field of south pole, current will flow in one direction. The same AB later moved at permanent magnet of north pole, the current will flow in opposite direction. See how is it rotating? Yes. Note that the galvanometer needle swings between the negative and positive values. This you means notice, as AB that was moving near the red color north pole, the current was on the left. And as the AB moved near the blue color magnet, the south pole, the current is on the right. This is how the AC current is. An alternating current is flowing through the galvanometer. Direction of induced current. Initially, the armature ABCD is vertical with its arm AB up and CD down. The direction of magnetic field is from left to right. As the armature undergoes a half rotation clockwise, arm AB moves down while arm CD moves up. According to Fleming's right hand rule, the current will flow in the direction DCBA. So, the current will flow from B1 to B2 through the galvanometer. Now during the next half rotation, arm AB moves up 
while arm CD moves down. Again by Fleming's right hand rule. Current will flow in the direction ABCD. That is, from P2 to P1 through the galvanometer. Thus, the induced current changes its direction every half rotation. Graphical representation of induced EMF. Suppose the armor takes T seconds to complete one rotation clockwise. At time T is equal to zero second. The armature ABCD is vertical with arm AB up and arm CD down. At this position, when the armature rotates, the rate of change of magnetic flux is momentarily zero. Hence, the induced EMF at this position is zero. During the first quarter rotation, the induced EMF increases. Then at time t upon 4 seconds, the armature becomes horizontal. At this position, the rate of change of magnetic flux momentarily attains the maximum value. Therefore, you know why it's maximum value? Because if you see AB now, it's maximum perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic flux. So at the point where it's maximum perpendicular, the induced current value also will be maximum. The induced current value are called induced EMF because it's a generator. This is the producer, the one supply the current. That's why it's called induced EMF. For the induced EMF at this position is maximum. During the second quarter rotation, the induced EMF decreases. Then at time t upon 2, the armature again becomes vertical and therefore the induced EMF is zero. During the third quarter rotation, the induced EMF increases but has an opposite polarity as compared to that of the first half rotation. At time 3t upon 4 seconds, the induced EMF attains its maximum negative value. During the fourth quarter rotation, the induced EMF decreases and becomes zero momentarily at time t seconds, as the armature is vertical once again. So the magnitude of the induced EMF is sinusoidal. In this module you have learned, an AC generator is an electric generator that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy in the form of alternating EMF or alternating current. An AC generator is based on the principle of electromagnetic induction. An AC generator consists of an armature, a shaft, a field magnet, slip rings and brushes. The graph between the time and EMF generated by an AC generator is sinusoidal. Okay guys, done for today. Right, done for today.